see what I'm talking about that it makes sense. So he's going to offer me his feedback, his opinion on, on how he thinks of what I'm saying to him. Right. You, am, am I, you know what I'm saying? We understand what you're saying. Yeah, so, so, so like, like I was saying, if a, if a person is going to, is going to do a thing by faith, so now because he's giving me his feedback, now I got to decide if I'm doing this thing by faith or if it's something that I just decided to do on my own. You see what I mean? But his response going to be based on whether he have done things by faith and they have happened without words. Or he gonna respond to do things by faith with works. Those gonna be his two responses. Exactly. So that's the only thing he can give. He gonna give you those based on his experience. Yeah. So then in, re in return, I have to take the things. So even if I talk to more than one person about it, uh -huh. I'm gonna have to take in everything and consider every piece of advice that I've mm -hmm. gotten to search myself mm -hmm. and see. What this thing I want to do is really based on. If you get 15 responses back, it's still only two answers. That's right. So then I still have that choice I have to make. Yeah, if but, if so I'm doing it choice, by faith or if you, I'm doing it myself. you make the choice based on the amount of feedback you got, one that was eight and one was seven, you're going to base it on that? No. no you that's, on that? I'm saying, okay. So what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that Okay. I don't know how to explain this no more. <laughs> okay. I don't know how to, I, I don't know how to explain this no more. Like um like if you're doing if you're doing if you're gonna do a task or something like that. Uh -huh. So when you do this task, you're gonna make your plan, right? Mm -hmm. You're gonna see uh you're gonna see all the things you need to make the plan work. Okay. You're gonna find out when you need when you can do the plan. You're gonna you're gonna answer like these five W's or something. Right. You're gonna ask yourself all these questions, consequences, you're gonna you're gonna try to, you know, evaluate mm -hmm. the whole the whole thing before you make that final decision. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when we talk about faith, we're gonna have to, you know, take the the heart, the heart piece too. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna have to see if we really feel like or maybe not so much as feel like but you know you know but god god help me out but you know it's gonna be it's gonna be like it's gonna be like a deep like a deep passion for the thing and you're gonna feel like you know you know this is the lord is gonna be in this thing and you you don't know about the success of the thing or not, but you got that the faith in it. And you believe mm -hmm. that it is possible. You mm -hmm. know that this thing can work out. Right. And so, if you do certain things, you've taken in all the advice from mm -hmm. from people you've talked to about it. You right. considered the cost mm -hmm. or, or whatever. Right. You know you did all of this, and now you you have to like say to yourself, Do I really? believe in this thing that I can do it or is this something I'm just trying to do to prove a point to somebody or something like that. It's like the <sighs> it still don't no. matter. You still don't got a two choices. You still either gonna do it. Yeah. Faith bad works. It's just like if a man sent in his house and he can't he got a disability. He gotta cut his grass. And somebody come by his house and say, well, faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. So he said that knowing that he can't go out and cut the grass. Mm -hmm. But somebody come by and say, well, faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. And he might say, well, I'm going to have faith that somebody will come cut the grass. Mm -hmm. But somebody just told him, faith, read it again, Mr. What you say? Even so, faith, if it has not worked, is dead, being alone. So somebody might come back and say that to him. Mm -hmm. And he might start feeling all messed up because he know he can't, don't have the ability to go out and cut the grass. Because mm -hmm. he said to him he had to do what? Faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. So he might then 
Okay, I heard that video Minister John was saying, so now I'm going to have faith without works. So now I don't have a choice but to try to operate faith without works. Mm -hmm. So now he's going to go into prayer and ask God to send somebody to cut his grace. Mm -hmm. So that's what's going to happen. So the next thing going to happen, somebody's going to come back and say, hey, man, I see your grave getting kind of half. I looked, I heard you was, uh, you had a disability. You want to go ahead and cut your grass for mm -hmm. So what work did he do? He didn't do a physical work. Right, a physical work. But I'm right. not going to try to take you past that if you can't get past it. But I'm just sharing with you that I have faith and I see a lot of things happen without my work. By your hands. Without my hands. Yeah. Without yeah. my hands. Yeah, so that's what that's all I'm saying. Right. Without my hands. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. So so like what you just said about that man, he had to decide if he gonna his work is works is gonna be his belief portion or if he if he's gonna try to like get his body out of his wheelchair and make his it. way. And he knows that that's probably an impossible task for him. Right. So he he's gonna have to decide, you know, if he gonna just continue to trust or is he gonna do something different? Right. But that's not right. the, that's, like so said, that's not the time, same scenario. Most of the time these things not gonna happen for you until you find yourself in a situation. If, you're, if you got the ability to go out and do everything you feel like you can do, you might not even get to that. You might not even get to the faith by itself. You might not get there. You might just believe that everything you need to do, you can go do it. You might not get there. So that's what I was saying, Pastor. <laughs> what I'm saying is that's, what, that's all I was saying right there. I just needed you to break it down. So that's exactly what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Like... You have to decide if, if it's faith working or is you working. Right. So that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You said the person may not never get there. So that's the decision that they made within their heart that right. it's not faith that's working, mm -hmm. it's me. Right. Minister, give me four, give me four or three. <laughs> James chapter four, verse three. He asks, and receive not, because ye act amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lust. Okay, what does that mean? We're in James chapter 4 now. Ye ask, and ye receive not, because you act amiss. What do that mean? It means you're wasting words. And you don't really have a care for the thing that you're asking for. You're uh -huh. just thinking that you are trying to try some out. Uh -huh. And if it works, it works. And if it don't, it don't. Mm -hmm. So you're asking a miss. Like you don't have no faith in it and no belief mm -hmm. in it. You're just wasting words. All the things you asking for don't have nothing to do with God. Mm -hmm. It don't oh. have nothing. Oh, I saw him with it. So why can't I have it? But so don't, so don't that's... Have it yeah. don't have nothing to do with the operations of God. Yeah, so I'm lusting after something. I see him. He got this thing. Okay. Yeah, I see he got well, it, and I go, want one too. Well, you need to go work with your hands then. Yeah. Well, faith without works is dead, so, so go work with your hands. So that's what I see. If it's not of God, then like I said, these operation things might not happen for you. Mm -hmm. Like I don't mm -hmm. even really need it. Right. I don't even really want it either. Right. I just I saw him with something and thought it looked nice and uh -huh. thought I might want to have one too. Right. Just because. Right. Read the next one from the minister. Chapter, I mean, verse 4. Yeah, no, no, Mr. Ye adulterers and adulteress, know ye not that the friendship of the world is Enemy, enemy, enemy. Enemies with God. Enemy. Enemy. Enmities of God mm -hmm. with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Give me one more. Verse 5. Do ye think that the scripture 
saint says the vain in mm -hmm. vain. The spirit that dwelleth in us lusts to envy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we're saying, if you ask something of God, I always try to, when I ask something of God, I try to make sure that it's to benefit not just myself. It's not something just for myself. Because the Lord says you will be asking what? Amiss. You're asking for things to consume with what? Lust. Your own lust. You're just lusting after things. Okay, any more comments so far? Give me, um, let me see 2 6, Minister. James 2 6. James chapter 2, verse 6. But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seat. Okay, I want it 3 6. Give me 3 6. James chapter 3, verse 6. Yeah. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defiled the whole body and set it on fire the course of nature uh -huh. and it is set on fire of hell. And it comes. Just with your mouth. Just with your mouth. Okay. Any more questions? What about verse 16 and 5, 16? James 5, 16. James 5, 16. Confess your fault one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The factual fervent prayer of a righteous man Embellish much. Confess your faults one to another. Difficult. Difficult for a lot of folks. I would help them to say mm -hmm. Confess your faults one to another. It's almost like having the gift of apology. It's just go out apologize or something. It's difficult. It's a difficult task. And it also lines up with what I still believe is that we have to be accountable to each other. Mm -hmm. You know? So, like, as we minister to others, we minister to ourselves. Right. You know? And I, I think that it, I mean, as we get more into tune with the Lord, like these kind of things should be easier for us to they do. They become easy. Yeah, they should be easier because yeah, you know. Yeah, they should go along. Yeah. If yeah. you're striving, though, you have to be striving to do right. Yeah. How often? Every, every hour. I was gonna say every day, but yeah. Every, every hour. Every day, every hour. You gotta examine yourself every hour. Mm -hmm. You gotta look at yourself every hour now. You got to think almost air out of there. How you doing? Everything you do, air out. And look back over air out. As long as he comes for a spot, he's out of the That means you need to be in repentance at least once a what? A wow. day. At least once a day, you need to say a prayer of repentance. Every day, I set my clock every day for five fifty nine. Mm -hmm. Every day, beep, 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 beep. Okay, Lord, thank you for our prayer. Lord God, forgive me for all my sins I have done. Lord, cast them all to the sea and forget that. Walk before you get, Lord God, to be that perfect. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. 
And he said, Lord, slow. Lord God, thank you, Lord God, for giving me this day, Lord God. Lord God, cast all my sins, Lord God, into the sea of forgiveness that I walk before you again, Lord God, to be thy perfect in Jesus' name. I hear a lot of people on TV praying, but they won't say God's name. I see a lot of ministers doing it. They won't say his name. They say Lord. I guess they're using that because it's Lord in his name, but I know they're using it so they don't fit folks. But they don't know that they could be denied in Christ too because the Lord knows what's in your what? In your heart. You're doing that so you want to offend folks. I know why you're doing it because it came in my spirit. That's why I was doing it. You know, pray, but they won't say Jesus' name. If you was in another country and you said Yahshua, somebody might understand. But I know you're doing it here because you don't want to offend other people. Out of denominations, out of relations, and stuff like that. So I know why you don't. So if I know, and I'm flesh, I know God. Let's pick up at Peter. Let's do a little bit of Peter. We ain't gonna do much. Make a couple verses here, but this is what we're gonna start at next. Anybody had a message they want to give? I got my message ready. You ready? <laughs> yeah, I got. You got my 15 message. minutes. I got 15 minutes. My message actually follows everything we've been saying today. Okay, you want to come up now? Sure. You got 15 minutes now, <laughs> not 16, not 17. You're going to put it on the timer. I'm going to put it on the timer. You got 15 <laughs> minutes. Let's give her a hand as she come up. Right. Yeah, 15 minutes. Bless the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord. I want to first give my honors to the Lord God and my Savior for giving me this opportunity. And I want to say that on Thursday, I said to the Lord, that Lord, I haven't wrote a message. I haven't, been, I haven't gotten a message in a little while. And then on um, Friday, Pastor said, <laughs> Pastor said, I'm gonna open the floor up. I gotta give my testimony. I'm gonna open the floor up for people to come in and give a 15 minute message. And, you know, it's my confession, as you know, mm -hmm. that everything that happens here is always in tune with the other. So, I bless the Lord. And then, last night, I was like, okay, do I need this message today? Or was it for next week? I don't know when. So, I was like, Lord, what would the message be? And this is when he gave me. My message is on indirect communication <laughs> indirect communication okay. Amen. so since pastor gave me 15 minutes if you don't interrupt me i might could do the 15 minutes but you know how we do here you know we teach so however much i get through i get through so bless me and bless y'all and let the lord give us a mind to receive and let me decrease so he can increase in me as I give you a few scriptures. So, I'm going to read what I wrote as usual. So, I was gathered with some family members, and one says to the effect that we should be careful of the words we speak, mm -hmm. for we can sometimes say things in a jokingly manner, but the message is not always received that way. And she went on to say, you need to know your audience and take care when saying things that unknowingly offends your brother or sister. Which brings me to my first scripture in Matthew chapter 5.
Matthew chapter 5, if I could have someone read for me, verses 35, starting at verse 37. And we're talking about indirect communication. Indirect communication. Matthew chapter 5, verse 37. But let, but let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Verse 38. Ye have heard, heard that it has been said, an eye for an eye, a two for a two. Verse 39. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but so, but so, but so ever, whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, Turn to him, the other also. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Verse 40. And if any man will sue thee at the law and take away the coat, let him have that cloak also. Mm -hmm. Verse 41. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Right. Verse 42. Give to him that asks thee, and from him that would borrow, of thee turn not thou away. Verse 43. Ye have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. Verse 44. But I say unto you, love your enemy, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and per persecute you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Lord God. Mm -hmm. So my, my message again is on indirect communication. Mm -hmm. And I decided to let, my, let the word mm -hmm. be my message. Instead of, because the, when I was doing, thinking on this message, the Lord had to remind me, you know, about giving the message in love versus, you know, using the word as a weapon against people who may have offended you or said some out of the way to you. You know, you know, sometimes when people indirectly communicate with you, mm -hmm. you know, you feel like they really don't want to be bothered with you sometimes and you know, they chug you all to the left or to the right, but let the word do the work. Mm -hmm. So your actions and your words matter. For death and life lies in the power of the tongue, mm -hmm. which brings me to my next scripture. 1 Corinthians 15 and starting at verse 49. First Corinthians chapter fifteen. Fifteen forty nine. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians chapter fifteen verse forty nine. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Verse fifty. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood can inherit the kingdom of God. Cannot. Cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither do corruption inherit incorruption. Verse 51. Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be all chained. Mm -hmm. Verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be, ch be changed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse 53. For this corruptible must put on corruption, incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Verse 54. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and the mortal sh shall have put on immortality, 
Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Verse 55, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Verse 56, The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Verse 57, But thank be to God, who has given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is, is not in vain in the Lord. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. So, indirect communication, that's what we're talking about, which can sometimes be read by your physical expressions, your tone of voice, or other vibes given off by your body language. Which again, brings me to my next scriptures and Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, and I'm going to start at verse 29. And it says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Amen. Verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Verse 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Verse 32. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Amen. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Verse 8. But now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy com communication out of your mouth. Verse 9. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Verse 10. And have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Philemon chapter 1. Starting at verse 3. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 4. I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers. Verse 5. Hearing of thy love and faith, which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints. Verse 6. That the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you, in Christ Jesus. And lastly, Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. And starting at verse 3. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Verse 4. Always in every prayer of mine for you all making requests with joy. 
Verse 5, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Verse 6, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So in closing, when we're talking about indirect communication, you know, we need to be more mindful of the things that we say out of our mouths because we never know how your message may be received and that you offend not your brother and your sisters. And um, another uh, reason that, you know, I feel like I was given this message is because lately, I've been seeing different things like people posting personal, you know, family emergencies and stuff like that on the Facebook. You know, and they don't come and tell their family members directly. And sometimes because a lot of people are not on these social media, like constantly, they miss the information, you know. And also, you know, when the Lord comes, do you want to find out of his coming through indirect communication? So that's the question I'll leave you with on today. So bless the Lord and thank you for this time. Amen. Amen. Any question, Pastor? <laughs> What you're saying, indirect communication. Indirect communication. Indirect communication. So what are you saying for them not to do them? Not to just post it? Just call the people or what? I'm saying that in all forms of communication, you know, it's it's relevant how you, who are in Christ that is, mm -hmm. speak to their brother or sister, mm -hmm. you know, the, the body language that a person gives all, you know, the indirect communication of, you know, posting things in the social media, mm -hmm. you know, because sometimes, you know, you have people that lose a family member. And before the family can be contacted, somebody has posted it on social media and now a person is devastated, mm -hmm. you know. And then you have, you know, your brothers and sisters who, the Lord wants me to, to speak with love in my heart. Mm -hmm. And 